This is a Sayong Tavoli Ultimate. It's a 1.5 petrol turbo, and this one's an automatic five door. So this is the ultimate spec. So you have got front sensors, lovely diamond cut alloy wheels as standard. The car comes with what we call intelligent key. So it comes with two keys and you've got this button here. So you've got one on this side and one on the passenger side. Literally, I can keep keys in my pocket or you can keep the keys in your handbag and you can push the button and it'll unlock the whole car. So what we're gonna do now, that locks the car up. As you can see, the wing mirrors will fold in automatically if you've got it on the right setting. They'll also open out on the right setting. So let's have a little wander around the car. What I can also do when I've got the keys in my pocket or in my possession or in your handbag, I can walk up to the boot. And if I put my hand here, I can actually open up the boots and I can access the boots. So it comes with a tournier cover and these boards, which will take up to 60 kilograms. Can remove the boards and move them about, but it basically covers up the space saver wheel. So the vehicle does come with a space saver wheel on the Ultimate and the Ultimate Nav. So we've got that there. Let's pick it around. You can also see the rear sensors. I say this is the platinum grey. As you can just see, it just flashed to say it's locked itself back up. So it's basically locked the boot back up because the doors were still shut anyway. So as we go around here, we have more of a look. I do love the platinum grey. I think it's a really nice colour. With the tinted rear windows as well. The roof bars and the chrome around the windows. I think it just all goes off really nicely. It does. So let's try and show you some things on this vehicle so like I said it's got intelligent key so what I need to do is push on this button for the passengers one ringers will sense that I'm there and fold out I'm going to start from here and then I'll work my way across so this is the button here that can fold the wing mirrors in and out but if you can leave it flat It'll then do it as soon as you lock the car up, they'll fold in automatically or unlock the car, they'll fold out automatically. The next one is your mirrors. So you do right or left to say which mirror you want to control, then use it like a joystick and it'll move the mirror glass around for you. Uh, you have everyone's electric windows on the driver's door. Obviously the nearest the door is the driver's side, but you've got everyone's electric windows there. You can hit this button down, it stops people playing about their windows. When the car gets up to five miles per hour, the car will lock itself up. So if anyone tries to grab the handle on the outside, they won't be able to get in, but you'll be able to get out from the inside. Same light as well, if you're in somewhere, a bit of a dodgy area, as soon as you get in your car, you can hit this button here, and it will lock you in the car straight away. So if any, again, anyone tries to grab the handle on the outside, they won't be able to get in, but you'll be able to get out from the inside. Um, so you've got that feature there. Same light as well, if someone's walking up to the car, you want to let them in, you can hit that button there and let them in for you. We've got the fuel cap release just down here. You pop that, it's on the passenger side. And all you do is unscrew and put fuel in. You've got your bonnet release just there. Fuses in there, which to be fair, you're never gonna really touch. And then we've got this bit here. Uh, so what we've got here, the first ones here are to brighten and darken the digital display. So let's show you that. So there's the digital display and what we'll do, that's at full brightness and then the opposite way I can make it as dark as possible if I wanted to. So personally I want it fully bright because I'm blind as a bat and I can't see. Right so what else we got? We have also got the one squeak cars with squeak lances off. It's basically ESP which is Electronic Staging Program. So it's got a little onboard computer, it tells it how much pressure to put on each wheel when it goes around corners. The idea of that is to stop the lack of light uh, spinning. And the one underneath that, we have got P off. That doesn't flip the bird at the person who's cut you up. That basically turns the parking sensor noise off. Why would you want to turn the parking sensor noise off? Yes, it can be a little bit annoying, but I'd rather have a beep, beep, beep than a bash, personally. But you have got the facility that you can turn it off. 
So further along to that, we've got the top left one, which is a car with a lot line either side, which basically is your lane keep. So basically what this does, it shows up on your dash. There it is down there as white to basically say it's on. When the car's driving along, the little camera that's up there, that's facing the world, basically looks at the road. If you can read the road markings, that little light down there, that white one, will turn green. And that basically says it's active. And basically the idea of that is, if I put a little bit of resistance in the steering wheel, if I turn the steering wheel, I'll get a little bit of resistance. And it's just enough to make me think, oh, I better look to see if there's anything in my mirror. Yeah, so it's just enough to do that. Uh, you can turn it off, but all you have to do is every time you get in the car, start the engine up, and then basically hit the button and it will turn it off. The one that un underneath that is the wheel with a bit of squeak lines coming off it. It's basically your heated steering wheel. So in these winter months that are coming up, uh, fuel bill costs and everything like that, cost of living going up, basically, don't worry about it. Just sit in your car, put your heat steering wheel on, and at least it warm your hands up. So you've got that bit there. So, what we've got on the steering wheel. This button here controls the digital dash. So at the moment, we're on the first one, which is the car. If I use this button here, it will change the screen. So I've got distance A, distance B, other options, but this one I like, drive range, which is basically how much fuel in miles in the petrol tank. Again, I can hit further through. It also shows me my tire pressure, but at the moment it's showing it's everything is zero because the wheels need to rotate several times before it actually gives off a pressure. Uh, so uh, say 30 seconds to a minute down the road, if you went to this setting, it will then show your tire pressure. Um, according to the Tivoli and according to the car, which you can find on the driver's door, so let's just show you that. On the driver's door, you can see the tire pressures. So you basically want to be 35 PSI all the way around. Uh, I would recommend perhaps putting 36 in, because just in case you lose a bit of air when you take the, the valve off or take it off the valve. So I'd say put 36 in personally. Um, so what else we got on here? On this digital dash, on this screen here, we've got the rev count on the left and the speedo on the right. In the rev counter, we have a little P that basically tells you what gear I'm in. So I can move through and change different gears and it all changes to tell you. If it's in drive light, it means it goes through all the gears itself. If I move the steering wheel, it basically I can go up the hand gears myself. So you've got that there. So what we're going to do now, go back into park, let's move along. So what we're going to do is we hit this button here. That'll move me to the next setting. I can have a digital speedo. I can have it looking like this, or if I hit this button, I can have it looking like that. Again, if I hit this button here, it moves around to lane keep and drive attention alert. So the idea of driver attention alert is basically it sort of records the way that you drive. So I'll give you an example. Sometimes I have to go off to a Sangon conference and it'll be up in Birmingham. So coming from Essex and Kent area, it's quite a long drive. So in the morning, I normally drive straight up there one hit, try not to stop, so I get there. But on the way back after, but having an hour and a half meeting, having some food and then deciding to drive back, get a little bit tired on the way back. And what this does is it recalls how I, how I am. So if I start being a little bit erratic with my driving, it'll actually turn around and tell me it's time for a break, have a cup of tea. I quite like it, I think it's a nice feature. So we've got this button again, hit that. It brings up the radio. So it'll tell me we're on dab radio at the moment. I'll try to turn the music down so it doesn't blare everyone. But it's showing that we're on DAB radio at the second. If I hit this button again, it'll then bring me to navigation screen. So, you can have the map showing not only on the main screen, but also on the digital dash. Again, I can use this button here to change how I want to look at that. So I can look at it like this, or I can push the button, and I'll look at it like this. It's a bigger map, but I've then still got my rev count on the left and my speedo on the right. I can hit it again and it will show me just the map so it mirrors it just like that for me as well. The other good feature as well, this car's got Apple and Android CarPlay. So if you did have it on Apple and Android CarPlay plugged in, it will show you up on the screen as well. I have done some videos on Apple and Android CarPlay. Uh, so that would be something I'll suggest you have a read of when you get five minutes. So let's put this back on to how much fuel miles and petrol tank for now. Right, so that's that. So what else have we got on the steering wheel? This is for your cruise control. So hit that button, 
tells me cruise control is on. I get to the speed I want, I then hit down to set it that speed. That will maintain that speed for me. So I'm driving along, mind my own business, say doing 60, 70 miles per hour, down the A12. Some plonker pulls out in front of me. Don't worry about pushing buttons, just put my feet straight back on the pedals. I'll take full control of the car again. So that's how you use cruise control. So you've got that there. Over this side, we have got volume, the radio. If you hold the minus button down, button down for about five to six seconds, it will just mute it for you straight away. This one's for your voice recognition. Again, I have done a video on Apple and uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, which shows you how to use this button. And it's a really good command button to use. Again, here you've got the modes and everything like that. Again, I've done that on another video, which um, you'll be able to find on our YouTube page. So what else have we got to look at? We've got right lights. So, lights off. Put the lights onto auto. So two music deems it dark enough, ping the side lights and the main lights come on for me. But I can do it myself. So there's my side lights, there's my main lights. Uh, full, uh, full, uh, full, full beam you push forward so it's on constantly. Full back to flash, basically. Um, your fog lights are front and rear, and they will show up on the display for you as well. Okay, so you've got that there for you. So let's take the fog lights off, let's put it back onto auto function. So we've got auto light function as well. Right, okay. So, to start the engine up, we have to have our foot in the brake. On this one, it's an automatic, so you have to have the car in park, and then you hit that button there whilst you've got your foot in the brake. That will start your engine up for you, okay? Like I said, there's, I've done a video on how to use the infotainment system, so please have a look at that. Uh, this is to do the air conditioning. So these ones here is your temperature. So you can have, Hotter or colder, either on the driver's side or the passenger's side. So say we're driving along and my passenger's too hot, they can feel about their own, they'll get it their temperature, I'll get it mine. I can, what I can then do is I can hit the sync button and it will reset it back to the driver's one and I can have it constant throughout. This is your on and off button for the air conditioning. This turns the AC on. This one here, you just hit the button until you get to the setting you want. So I normally have it on window and feet. When you do touch anything to do with the air conditioning, it will take over the infotainment system, so you can see. Fan speed down, fan speed up to make it faster. This one, you can either grab the air from outside or circulate the air that's in the car. Personally, I'd rather circulate, circulate the air that's in the vehicle, because um, I've got this feeling if it's grabbed it once to warm it up or cool it down, when it grabs it again, it doesn't have to work as hard. Same night as well, don't get the smog and smell from outside getting into the car. The auto button, basically what it's a bit like thermostat in your house. I can set this to 18, hit auto, and then every time I get into the car, the car will either work its temperature up to 18 or work its temperature down to 18 as soon as I get in the car. You'll notice this button here and this button here is basically for the heated seats in the front. So driver and passenger will have heated seats on this, on this back. So I can do this. It basically gives me third degree burns, makes me warm, makes me lukewarm, and then off. So you've got that bit there. The A off is basically what we call stop start technology. So basically as we're out of traffic lights or anything like that, uh, we come out of gear or we're sitting in park for a while, the car will basically work itself out. Now if the car thinks it can restart you and you've been sitting there for ages, it will basically in effect cut the engine. So your revs go from a thousand down to zero. But as soon as you put your feet back on the pedals, it'll come back to life. The idea of it is to help save your fuel. It does feel like you stalled it a little bit at the time, but it's one of those things, it's something you get used to. And I would recommend using it because it will, in the long run, help you save fuel. But you've got the USB point there, that's where you plug your MP3 player, your iPod, or the wire that you're gonna use for your Apple or Android CarPlay. Um, so it does that. You've got the drive mode button here as well. The drive mode button basically means you can drive the car in sports mode, normal mode, and you can do winter mode as well. So basically, how what does that do? Normal mode is just normal. Sports mode makes the steering a little bit stiffer as you're driving along. And winter mode, it also makes it um, the gearbox being the gears for that a little bit longer as well. So it does that for you. You have 12 volts down here, two cup holders, the old fashioned cigarette lighter, which you can also use as 12 volts there as well. Glove box there. Up here, <coughs> you've got your 
mirror and then you can click on this little sunglass holder put the lights on or you can do it so it's on the door and it puts it onto the door for you as well so hopefully that's a nice little bit of explanation of how to use your vehicle and what to do in it so if you've got any other questions or anything like that, feel free to give us a call or send us a message and I'll try and answer the best I can. But that is basically a little explanation of how to use everything on a Seon Tavoli Ultimate. Thank you very much. Bye.